Hello students, it's time for another gizmo. So when we come to our Explore Learning website, a gizmo might already be added to your class. If it's not, under the Find Gizmos, you're just going to type in Vector or Vectors, and it's going to be this one right here. And we'll click to launch the gizmo. And here it is. Make sure, as always, under the info that you want to click on one of these student exploration sheets. Remember, this is the guide that walks you through the procedure and it's also a place to record answers and any data. So for this particular one, we're going to be doing activity A, vector magnitude and angle, and we'll go down a little bit more, and vector B, we'll do vector, activity B for vector sums. So this particular gizmo is a little bit different in terms of the way it is doing uh, vectors than what we do in class. One of the things that you notice up here is that we've got i and we have j. So these are called unit vectors. So anytime you see i, it's referring to how many units along the x-axis, and j is how many units along the y-axis. It's just another way of describing the coordinates for any of the vectors. So we've got vector a over here, we've got vector b over here. You can grab the tail of the vector to move it around to change the position. And if you grab the head of the vector, you can change the angle. And if you notice, when I change the angle, up here on the left, you can see that the coordinates are changing for this vector. And we can do the same thing for this one. We can move it around. We can go over here. We can change the length. And we can also change the angle that it's at. Uh, if you have the crosshairs like this, you can actually move the whole uh, coordinate system. So just be careful when you're grabbing your vectors that you don't move the whole background. So one of the things that we can do to make it so that it's very similar to what we do in our class is we can show the x and the y components. And it will do that for each of the vectors. So you can see for vector a over here that it's resolved it into the x and the y component. Uh, the b vector actually has done the same thing, but because it is along just the x-axis, it does not have both an x and a y. But if I change it, you can see that now we have an x and a y component. The other thing that we can do and get rid of these just for the moment, is that if I take these different vectors, I'll just put it here like this, I'm just going to shorten this one. If we add them together like we do in class with the tail to tip method, we can put them together here. And then if we do show resultant, here's the resultant vector for adding those together. And again, it gives the x and the y for that particular one. And if we drag it all the way over, you can see it does actually match. Remember that a vector can be moved anywhere as long as it's in the same direction and it's the same length. So even though this is the resultant, the one that's labeled C, you literally can put it anywhere and it doesn't change the value of that vector. Uh, if you'd like, you could do show the sum computation for how it would add these i and j values, but this is something that we don't do in class, so I'm not going to recommend that you do that. Uh, additionally, down here, there's another way of adding vectors together, and there's something called the dot product and you get the dot product down here. But again, this is something that we don't do for our class so that you don't have to do that part either. There is a ruler that's down here. The ruler is one that you would grab and change the length if you wanted to measure the sides manually. You can see that it gives the length. Uh, we don't have to worry about click on the measure to area. Uh, but you do also have two angle tools over here. And so they just work by you grab and you can change the angle. You can see that that angle down here is changing. And you can have two of them to work at the same time if you wanted to use these to measure the angles when you're adding the vectors together. So there you have it. You've got your resultant vector over here. You can also resolve it into the components, show the x and the y components. And you're going to be working on activities A and B for this gizmo. I'll see you in class.